Hello, let's have a run through of the tributaries, the lateral uh, tributaries of the post cavalry vein. And so, as you remember, the post cavalry vein is this large vein draining into the right atrium. So, if the pre cava drains, the blood from the anterior portions of the body then the post cava will drain the remaining posterior parts of the body and that post cava there that post cava vein will penetrate the diaphragm as well as the liver substance also receiving blood from those body parts specifically the the phrenic vein drains the diaphragm and passes it to the to the post cava whereas the post cava receives blood from the liver via the hepatic veins and then eventually it will emerge in the abdominal cavity penetrating the liver and here's the post cava you'll see that if you cut some substance of the lateral, right lateral lobe of the liver, that it has a huge hole. Has a huge hole there where the post cava passed through. So if you don't believe that this is the post cava, you can actually probe it and see that the probe reaches all the way there to the thoracic portion of the post cava. Post cava penetrates the liver and becomes this one. So let's trace the lateral tributaries of the post cava. So one of its first tributaries in the abdominal cavity is this small adrenal lumbar vein passing over this nut sized organ called the adrenal gland and then immediately posterior to it you'll see that left renal vein and then there's a left ovarian vein so this is a female specimen but if you have a male specimen, then this one will be the left internal spermatic vein. So we're specifying the, the side. So we're on the left side because the tributaries of the post cava are asymmetric, meaning they're not exactly the same on the left and right side. They have subtle differences. So for example, you can see that the ovarian vein and the adrenal lumbar vein fuse with the left renal vein so they drain into the left renal vein and then eventually the blood will go to the post cava but on the right side if you dissect them on the right side those veins the adrenal lumbar and left ovarian or left internal spermatic if it's a male will have separate drainage into the post cava so they don't fuse with the left renal vein on the right side. So to give you an example, the right side is not dissected on this specimen, but you'll see that the, the right ovarian vein has a separate entry into the post cava. It does not fuse with the right renal vein. Okay, so this is the left tributaries. You have to specify the laterality and then if you move more posteriorly and look at underneath the post cava or dorsal to it you'll see veins draining the apical muscles on the back side those, are, those would be the lumbar veins. So there are many 
lumbar veins. You can look for one or two of them. Some of them have been severed already in this specimen. But they're, it's three-dimensional, so they're going dorsal. So this is one lumbar vein. And then if you move more posteriorly, you'll see the iliolumbar vein. iliolumbar veins going laterally on each side. So this is one iliolumbar vein. And this is another iliolumbar vein, the right iliolumbar vein. And then immediately after the iliolumbars, you'll see that the post cava is made from the fusion of two veins the left and the right common iliac veins let me zoom in first so you have a better view so there's the post cava right at first more proximally the post cava is actually ventral and so you can see it easily ventral to this artery here, the abdominal aorta. But if you move more distally, they change and switch position. Now the abdominal aorta is more ventral to the post cava and the post cava is now hidden dorsally. Right, so you have to shove aside the post cava in order the, I mean the abdominal aorta to, in order to see the continuation of the post cava there. But the post cava splits into the common iliacs. This is the left common iliac, right common iliac, which will now uh, drain the hind limbs. The common iliac splits into the external so this is the common iliac and it splits into the external iliac vein and down there it gives rise to the internal iliac vein so it splits again Common ilia, external ilia, internal ilia. And then they, if you follow the external ilia, it will eventually penetrate the inguinal canal and emerge on the ventral surface of the thigh as the femoral, femoral vein. And the deep femoral vein and also some tributaries tributaries coming from the ventral abdominal wall these are the inferior epigastric veins and then if you follow the femoral vein more distally it will give rise to this superficial vein in the shank called the saphenous vein. So this is the saphenous vein. So those are, would be the tributaries of the external iliac. Let's follow the tributaries of the internal ilia, the right common ilia. And then it splits into the external, right external ilia. And then down there would be the right internal iliac vein. And you can see this vein coming from the internal or draining into the internal iliac vein and then passing over the rectum and other uh, pelvic organs. So this would be the middle, middle hemorrhoidal vein draining among others the rectum of blood and passing it to the internal iliac and then to the common Yeah,
and then there's a caudal vein draining the tail and uh, the caudal vein drains into one of the two common iliacs sometimes it's in the it drains into the left common iliac sometimes on the right side in this case i found that the caudal vein drains into the right common iliac so where's that So you see that, the tiny vein there going to the middle and a bit dorsal. So that's the caudal vein. So we're still at the common area. Here's the start of the split of the common area, splitting into Splitting into the internal ilia and external ilia veins.